Ooh La La is a 1973 song sung by the band Faces and later made famous by Rod Stewart in 1998. It was the title song for the Faces' last studio album, and the chorus laments, I wish that I knew what I know now when I was younger. Every year at WWDC, this song plays in my head. If I'm going to have my app survive another year in the App Store, I'm going to have to make some changes to fix depreciated code and update them to work on the latest iPhones or support something new like dark mode. The problem is with my earlier apps, the code stinks. They're functional, but maintaining them is a bit of a nightmare. Thus, I wish I knew what I know now when I was younger. Hi, I'm Stuart Lynch. And this is another video in the series for developers who are in between the beginner stage and landing their first job. Or just people like me who are independent learners who want to develop their skills just because. In this video, I'm going to take a look at mistakes I made early on where I created global variables and how I progressed to creating utility classes and finally, where possible, created type extensions instead. This is part one of two, as in the next video, I'll cover global functions instead of variables. If you're interested in seeing how these three things tie together and morph from one to the other, then keep watching. Probably the best way to go about this topic is by way of example. For me, I prefer to use Swift UI instead of a playground here to show UI changes because of the new canvas. You can see what's happening on the fly as I make changes. This is just a red rounded rectangle in the middle of the screen. I want to focus on changing the color of that rectangle. Whether or not you use Swift UI yet or not, it's irrelevant to the video. You should be able to follow along. The fill for this rectangle is a color struct, and that too is a view. Just like any other view, it has a UI color modifier. So color.red assigns the color red to the view. This can also be written like this, color, UI color.red. So let's change that color using the UI color initializer and set it to a light blue color. Now this is pretty ugly. Fortunately, we now have the ability to create color assets. In this project, I actually have three color assets. This light blue one that we've just seen, but also a medium and dark blue. These are going to be the colors for my theme. I went without adding the color name blue because I may decide that blue isn't my color after all and want to change it to a shade of green instead in the future. It's better not to get too specific, so just light, medium, and dark color. Now I can go back to my content view and replace my code with this. However, I have to force unwrap it because I may or may not have a color named light color. Also, for sure, the next time I try and pick one of these colors, I'm going to forget what I call them. So wouldn't it be nice if I had some code completion? Well, this is what I'd do. I'd create a new file, and the file can be called anything, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to use this blank file here. And I'm going to create three constants and assign each one of them the force unwrapped corresponding color asset. They're on their own, not in any struct or class, and thus are accessible from anywhere in my application. I can go back to my content view and change that color assignment to this. Now here's my problem. Even though I eventually get some code completion, I have to sift through everything else and still kind of have to know what I called them. I can guess and eventually I'll find it, but it's difficult and not particularly easy. So. On to the next step in my development. So the next thing I did was create a class that has all of my colors as properties. I'm going to call it a utility class. So let me copy these constants first, and I'll use this file here and create my class and call it my colors. And I'll just paste in my three color constants here. Now the problem is that when I need to use one of these colors, I'll need an instance of this color, and then I'll get some code completion. In Swift UI, however, you just can't start defining constants or variables in the middle of a function builder, which is where we are when we're assigning our fill color. So we can take a shortcut and combine both of these steps like this. This works, and so you see, as soon as I type the period, I get shown all of the properties of the instance, and I can pick one. Not bad, but 
I'm never going to need more than one instance of this class, and if I did, I would want my colors to always be the same. So what I can do is make each of these properties static, and that way they become global, so to speak. In fact, I no longer need to create an instance of this class. To access a static property, you can just use the class name itself, and then when I press the period, you see your options. This is getting better, but still not good enough in my opinion. Just as an aside, since this class is never going to have an instance created, I could have just as easily created it as a struct or even as an enum, and it'll still work. Moving on with my evolution in my coding path, I realized that all I'm doing here is creating color properties, and I liked how in my original object I just use fill color.red. Can I do that with my custom colors too? Well, you can. All you need to do is extend the UI color type with an extension. First, let's copy these static properties and create an extension for UI color in this file here. Inside the extension, I'll just paste my three static colors. Now, back in content view, I can update my color view using the shorthand version. This makes it easy to change my colors, have code completion, and be consistent in how I use the built-in colors. I can even do better than this. I don't even need to type UI color as the color struct is expecting a UI color. So just like how we had dot red at the beginning, I can just use dot light color just as if it were one of the built-in ones. Extensions are a wonderful thing. So indulge me for a few more minutes. What if you were always going to have a rounded rectangle of the same size, but one of three different colors? This could, for example, be a game piece. What I'm going to do is simply create an extension of rounded rectangle. But first I have to change this to import Swift UI as a rounded rectangle is a Swift UI view. Again, I'm just going to create static properties of the type rounded rectangle that gets a particular color. Let's start with light. As we start typing, eventually I get this error. All this means is that we have to tell our static constant that we're creating some view. Now we can complete the fill and frame modifiers of our light rectangle. Copying and pasting quickly going through, I can create my medium and dark static rectangles. So how can I use these? Let's go back to our content view and comment out all of the code in the V stack and replace it with a rounded rectangle dot light. Works just as before. Let's add two more to our stack, rounded rectangle dot medium and rounded rectangle dot dark. I think I'm happy now. In the next video, I'll take a similar approach and show you how I progress from creating global functions to utility class functions and type extensions as well. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. If I get enough positive feedback, I'll continue to build out similar tutorials for Swift developers who have left the starting gate but still need to add to their toolbox. You can check out my YouTube channel to see what other videos I've created. Visit my website to see my iOS app portfolio of apps currently on the App Store and check out my GitHub repository to see what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching. I'm most active on Twitter, so follow me there for notifications of other Swift-related things that I'm up to.